First up, he is the former FBI special agent and author of Messing with the Enemy, Surviving in a Social Media World of Hackers, Terrorists, Russians, and Fake News, Clint Watts. Clint Watts. Hey. Thank you. I salute you. See you all the time. Yeah. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you. All right. So, uh, listen, uh, in light of this shooting, uh, we don't know a lot about it, but uh, it is, of course, involved with social media, as everything is, and your, your book is a lot about that. Uh, you have something, uh, a phrase I thought was very interesting, clickbait populism. You think this applies here? Would you tell us what that is? It does. Uh, you know, we could not have Donald Trump as president before the era of social media, and there are audiences that have powered him. What he's been able to do and what other leaders, like the leader of the Islamic State, have been able to do is use social media to power their agenda and win a crowd. Leaders aren't born anymore. They're accrued through retweets, right. likes, and shares. And what we're seeing today are audiences taking on the tactics, the same tactics we saw with the Russians, and using it for their own partisan purposes. We don't really need to worry about the Russians at this point because everybody's copying that playbook. Yeah, I saw that within 20 minutes of this shooting, there was fake information about the shooter. The right wing is always trying to make these people into leftists, so they faked him with a Hillary hat on. Right. Uh, with, and people don't really check this stuff out. They are going to sites, first of all, that confirm what they want to believe to, be, to begin with, right? Right. This is all about confirmation bias and implicit bias. Confirmation bias is, I only pick that what I want to hear. Implicit bias is, if it comes from my friends, family, or people that look like me and talk like me, then I will take it on and believe it to be true, and no one can shout that down. So the first thing you see is what you tend to believe is true, and that which you see the most often. And that's why this social media misinformation we saw like today can mislead people, defame people, it can ruin people's lives, and yet none of it is true, and it's very hard to correct that falsehood. Yeah, th this... Uh... <laughs> this shooter had two subjects on his Instagram account, guns, and Trump. I don't know what that means, but I don't think it's good. No. It, I mean, what we've seen across all of this populism, whether it's jihadi populism, we used to talk about with ISIS, sure. the Islamic State, or with the extremist groups in the United States, it's violence, and it's a promotion of violence. And we've got easy access to weapons. We've got unlimited access to social media. Very easy ability to make content. It's, it's a dangerous mix. And, and just the way they micro-target for selling products. They do it with people's opinions, too. I, I know you've said that Alex Jones, for example, is perfect for, for what Russia is doing, because he will lead them right to the gullible idiots. That's right. People, you know, that are falling for this oftentimes are new to these information sources. Uh, they don't really know how to evaluate them. They're new to social media, and they're hyper-partisan. They really want to be part of what I call a social media nation. And the more time people spend on cell phones, and with their virtual friends, the more connected they come with them, and that starts to overtake, literally, Trump physical nations, those people that live around them like Americans. So they start to identify not by, you know, the American flag or common beliefs and values in democracy, but hashtags, avatars, bios, and pictures. If you want to know who an ISIS supporter is, that's easy. Go look for bin Laden pictures, Alki pictures, Baghdadi pictures, and ISIS flags. If you want to know who a Trump supporter is, well, that's MAGA hats, MAGA Trump train, and, you know, a handful of other hashtags. And the next one to come up is the resistance. I mean, if you want to understand how Trump overtook the GOP, it's the same way ISIS overtook al-Qaeda and how the resistance could overtake the Democrats. That's the next real social media bubble that's coming up. What do you mean the resistance could overtake? You mean, I thought the resistance was the Democrats. Jesus, it's worse than I thought. Well... <laughs> It's true. I, I mean... What do you mean? Are they different? It's that you can understand there's more of an identity attached to those social media nationalism than there is to these actual traditional organizations. So Al-Qaeda used to say, how do we know these people are in Al-Qaeda? Right. The GOP says, we don't actually believe in these things Trump supporters say. And now we have the resistance, which oftentimes is at, you know, battles with traditional Democrats and, and, the, and the mainstream left. So as a longtime FBI man, what do you think this week when Trump says there was a mole from the FBI in my campaign. FBI doesn't do moles in campaigns, do they? No, it's a bunch of nonsense. And I mean, it's, you know, we, I've been saying that the Russians, the, 
the Russians don't need to make fake news because the president makes plenty for them to use. And, right. and, and so the new threat really is that we have American active measures. We have Americans that are destroying U.S. institutions with complete falsehoods. The FBI's mission is to protect the United States. So if they had tips that there might be a Russian infiltration into the United States to meddle with our election, which has been found out, then they should go after that. So using a confidential informant, a trusted source, to go test out those leads, it would be negligent for them not to do that. And they were doing what they should be doing, protecting our country. It, it, it. <laughs> it's amazing, uh, is it how quickly it has turned around about the FBI? I mean, I was freaking out when Trump won the election because at that moment, I thought the FBI was in his pocket. They, kept, they were calling the FBI Trumplandia. Yeah. Remember that? Trumpville, New York Trump, City. Right. They were saying that Comey released that letter 11 days before the election that sunk Hillary because he was losing control of the FBI and he had to do that from pressure within his own organization. I don't know if that's true. Right. But how did the FBI completely turn around. This is so scary that they are so quickly able to change people's minds on a fundamental matter like who who's with the uh, who is the FBI with? Yeah, it, it's interesting that the president likes to pick on people that can't fight back, namely the intelligence community and the FBI. Right. They can't come out and defend themselves. Sure. Who can? Well, the Mueller investigation can, but they're going to do things properly, right? They're going to go through sources. They're, they're going to go through methods. And traditionally, from what I remember, it's a very conservative organization. I, I remember going to the seventh... Yes. I remember going to the seventh floor of the FBI headquarters with a green shirt one day, and they were like, white or blue here? Yeah. No green. What are you doing? Yeah. Yes. I've always been a big fan of squares. Yeah. Squares keep society going. That's right. In ways I could not. That, <laughs> That might be true. No, yeah. It is very true. I'm not the hunter. I'm drawing on the cave of the wall, but that's not essential. Yeah. What you did was much more essential. What, what do you think about Rudy Giuliani saying... A guy just threw up at the name of Rudy. Did you hear that? He, he, I heard a man literally throw up in his mouth. <laughs> right? Am I right? OK. Uh, <laughs> and you are correct, sir, by the way. But. Him saying that you can get information from a foreign government, and that's perfectly legal. He said, you know, when I ran, people tried to get dirt on me. It's not nice, but it's the way it is. It doesn't matter if it's a Russian or... Ger that's crazy, too, right? No. Uh, uh, America first means Americans first. And, and you right. don't take uh, anything from a foreign country that's trying to destroy our institutions, okay. destroy and put divisions between our own people so that they fight each other, so that they can break us up into pieces, divide and conquer us. You don't do that. And what we have seen is, even in other cases, let's go back to Gore versus Bush. There was a Gore staffer who received a playbook, essentially, for sure. the debate. What did he do? He said, I'm turning this over to the FBI, and I'm re I will recuse myself from the debate, because I don't want, one, to be seen as doing dirty tricks, and two, I don't want anyone to think that there was something up when the debate comes. That was the exact scenario. If the Russians show up at your building called Trump Tower as Russian government attorneys, the first call you make is the FBI, and the last thing you do is shut the door and don't let those people in. Well, you're a real patriot. I hope uh, you and I are not sharing a cell someday. Ben Watts, thank you very much, sir. All right.